Hi everyone! We are still in the introductory topics in preparation for the Calculus 1 course. In this section we're going to focus on some other basic functions. You've already discussed linear and quadratic functions in quite some detail in the previous sections. In this video we're going to present a list of functions and their graphs that will be useful to know throughout your Cal course. Let's start with y equals x cubed. This is a third degree polynomial. This is a basic cubic function. And here is its aspect. One thing you should notice is how the curve becomes horizontal briefly through the origin before resuming its increasing behavior. Its domain consists of all real numbers as well as its range which would extend from minus infinity to plus infinity in the y component. y equals square root of x has a more limited domain, as you can notice. Only values of x that are 0 or more can belong or can be used to calculate the root of x. Also, square root functions can only produce positive or zero outcomes, which explains the range going from zero inclusively to infinity. The cube root of x does allow for positive and negative x components. Here is its graph with one very specific feature, which is how it becomes perfectly vertical for a brief moment through the origin. The domain of a cube root function consists of all real numbers, and the range also consists of all real numbers. y equals 1 over x is the basic rational function. Here is its graph, and one of the main features you should observe is that it is undefined for x equals 0. Obviously, division by 0 is forbidden x equals 0 generates a vertical asymptote, and you can tell by the infinite behavior that this function has in the vicinity of x equals 0. also has horizontal asymptotes, or a horizontal asymptote, uh, y equals 0, that the function tends towards at both extremities. So the domain consists of all real numbers aside from x equals 0, and the range consists of all real numbers aside from y equals 0, which is denoted by r star. y equal absolute value of x is a function that has a v-shape. In fact, it's a piecewise function that is determined by two different rules. To the left of 0, this is actually a line y equals minus x. To the right of 0, y equals x is the line that is being used. The domain of the absolute value function consists of all real numbers, and its range is restricted to positive or non-zero values, so 0 to infinity. Now, all of these functions can undergo some transformations. If y equals f of x represents a function, then the transformation y equals f of x minus h plus k will generate a horizontal and a vertical translation of the function's graph. More specifically, if h is a positive number, then y equals f of x minus h will be shifted h units relative to the right of the original function y equals f of x. If h is a negative number, then y equals f of x minus h will be shifted absolute value of h, so positive distance, to the left of y equals f of x. If k is a positive number, then y equals f of x plus k will be shifted k units above the original function y equals f of x. And finally, if k is a negative number, then y equals f of x plus k will be shifted absolute value of k units below the original graph. For instance, let's consider the graph of the function 
y equals x minus 2 cubed plus 5. First, let's recognize that y equals x minus 2 cubed plus 5 is actually just a transformation of the basic form y equals x cubed. Within the rule y equals x minus 2 cubed plus 5, the rules of h and k are taken by 2 and 5 respectively. They are both positive. Hence, we would expect this function will be obtained from y equals x cubed, so that's our reference function, by applying a two-unit shift to the right, that's generated by the positive h equals 2 value, and a five units up, generated by the k equals 5. Now, the best way to graph the new function from the original one is to use some point of reference. Notice the dot I have placed through the origin, which is where the cubic function in its basic form flattens out for a moment. The h is 2, which shifts to the right by 2 units, and the k is 5, which shifts the curve 5 units upwards. So the reference point that used to be at the origin will be displaced to this new location, 2, 5, maintaining the shape that it had originally. Let's graph the function y equals 1 over x plus 1 minus 3. Again, it's a question of recognizing which of our basic functions can be associated to this one we're trying to graph. You can recognize that y equals 1 over x plus 1 minus 3 is obtained by transforming the basic form 1 over x, or y equals 1 over x. The only change that took place is a 1 that was added to the x, and a minus 3 added on the side. So within the rule, y equals 1 over x plus 1 minus 3, which we could also write as 1 over x minus minus 1 plus minus 3, this time the rules of h and k are taken by minus 1 and minus 3 respectively. This time both are negative. So we would expect that this function will be obtained from y equals 1 over x by applying a one unit shift to the left because the size of h is 1. h itself is minus 1, but the size of that number is 1, and 3 units down because of the k value being minus 3. Here is the basic curve for y equals 1 over x. There are no specific points that are easily recognizable, so instead I will focus on the two asymptotes, the vertical asymptote x equals 0 and y equals 0, and apply the shifts to those asymptotes. Because h is minus 1, the asymptote will be shifted left by one unit, and because k is minus 3, the horizontal asymptote will be shifted down by 3 as well. So that guides the drawing of your adapted function, keeping in mind that the curve must approach these asymptotes. The shape itself is maintained the same as it was originally. Okay, reflections. y equals f of x represents a given function, then, um, then the transformation y equals f of minus x. So in other words, if x is replaced by minus x, it will generate a reflection across the y-axis. If y equals f of x represents a function and the transformation turns it into y equals minus f of x, this will generate a reflection across the x-axis. For instance, in blue, I've graphed the function y equals square root of x. You'll notice that the orange curve is a, ref a reflection across the y-axis. It is obtained from y equals root of minus x. You'll also observe that the gray curve is a reflection across the x-axis, which means a sign change took place to the outcome of the y-value. So y equals minus root of x would be the equation of that bottom root function. Compressions and stretches. If y equals f of x represents a function, then 
Multiplying f of x by a will generate a vertical stretch if a is bigger than 1. However, if a is a number between 0 and 1, a vertical compression will occur. Again, just to see what the effect of an a value uh, will have, here is the basic square root function, y equals root of x. If we were to replace y equals square root of x by 2 root of x, it will create a stretch. Notice how the function accelerates upwards faster than it did originally. So it's a vertical stretch. If we were to multiply uh, root of x by 1 third, a would be 1 third and therefore between 0 and 1, and it would compress it vertically, leaving it closer to the x-axis.